As I mentioned, the reporter who broke that story, Lachlan Markey, will be joining us here later in tonight's broadcast. Joining us now, one of the Republicans competing in the first Fox uh, Business presidential debate, uh, Senator Rand Paul, a member of several key Senate committees, including Foreign Relations, Homeland Security. Senator, it is great to have you with us, uh, and good evening. Let, let me turn first, yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, first to the developments that Mike Emanuel is reporting, uh, and that is that uh, a signed document has been discovered uh, at the State Department in which the Secretary of State acknowledged her responsibility for the mishandling of classified uh, information, whether intentionally or negligently. Your thoughts? Well, I think without question, I think she knew that this was an improper thing to do. During her administration as Secretary of State, she actually relieved one of her ambassadors who did the same thing, used a private email server to circumvent and go around government rules. The fact that she signed the document, sure, it indicates that you shouldn't sign documents that you don't read and that she should have known that she was obligated to be using a government server. But above and beyond that, it just goes to a question of judgment. If you're going to lead the country as Commander-in-Chief, you have to use good judgment. And was it good judgment uh, to safeguard our nation's secrets by putting it on a private server? I think it was a really, really serious lapse of judgment, and it really goes to character as to whether or not she ought to be considered as Commander-in-Chief. I, I want to turn to your most uh, recent legislative uh, actions before we turn to your, your candidacy and your campaign, and that is uh, seeking an audit from the Federal Reserve, seeking to uh, have the Federal Reserve Band prohibited from lobbying Congress. Uh, do you think that that will move forward? You know, what always really annoys me is that we give entities money and then they use that money to lobby against reform. Now, the Federal Reserve doesn't actually get money from us, but it sort of creates money. It has the monopoly power to make money, and they make money and they make a profit off of making money. But I don't think they should be able to allow to use some of that to come back and lobby against transparency. All I'm asking is that we should audit them, look at their books, and if they're bailing out foreign banks, shouldn't we be told which banks are bailing out? Right. Yeah, it, it does seem, I, I have to agree with you, Senator, that it does seem uh, unnecessarily, if you will, uh, uh, arcane uh, for the Federal Reserve to insist that we divine what they are, the impact of those money flows are that they create and whether they end up in a foreign banking system or not. Uh, I, I want to turn now to uh, the campaign, as you might guess. Uh, looking forward to seeing you in Milwaukee, Wisconsin next week. Uh, your campaign, uh, your, your judgment as to where you are and where you intend to uh, prevail and break through to the lead. You know, I think some of our strength is underreported. We have a lot of uh, young people involved with our movement. Our, our best constituency is actually under 40 years of age, and particularly under 30 years of age. College kids, they don't show up in presidential polling. I've yet to meet a college kid that's ever answered a presidential poll. That's one of our strengths. Independence is another strength. And then the liberty wing of the Republican Party, a party that says, you know, the people in our party that say, you know what, we need to lower spending, both for domestic spending and for military spending. You know, I, I, I'm smiling as you were talking about those young folks not showing up in polling. I, I haven't even met uh, folks in my age group who've ever responded to a presidential <laughs> poll. So we're, we're taking a lot on faith, aren't we? I, I, I want to turn to the debate uh, itself uh, and the degree to which you think it will be personal and the degree to which you think it will be substantive. Uh, I have a strong sense uh, from the standpoint of the uh, questioners and the moderators as to the sub substantive commitment. What do you think about the candidates? You know, uh, from the what I can guess of the moderators, I've interviewed with all of the moderators, and I think sure. we are going to have a good debate. From the candidates' point of view, I think we all want a little more uh, time to discuss some of the issues. And my understanding is the rules will allow for 90-second answers. Right. And you probably know this, but some people don't realize 90 seconds is a pretty long time in TV. An eternity. And so uh, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. I really want to have at least 90 seconds to say, what is my tax plan about? You know, what is my vision for the country? I think we're going to have more time in this with a few less candidates and a little bit longer answers. Well, I, and I think there is, and I'd like to get your sense of this, not to comment specifically on it, but you're certainly uh, invited to do so.
but uh, Dr. Ben Carson being accused of fabricating a story by Politico when in fact uh, they're accusing him of denying, uh, uh, excuse me, let me get this right, of uh, confessing to, a, uh, to their charge, which by the way, patently did not, uh, was not stated by uh, Dr. Carson. Uh, you're, is this, these hit pieces, are these hit pieces, you think, a sense of, uh, you I know, the beat picking up a bit in the campaigns? You know, I think it's sort of a tempest in a teapot. I remember, you know, see, I didn't finish college. I went directly to medical school after two and a half years, and I'm proud of the fact I worked very hard to get in early. Right. But I've had people accuse me of being dishonest about having a college degree oh, because sometimes that. in the discussion uh, I, of it, yeah, so it's the same kind of thing. He didn't even go to West Point, and I don't think he ever, uh, what he said sounds like he was confused about the process of whether you get scholarships or not to West yeah, Point. He, he only I'd went to it, Yale. I'd, I would give yeah. a. <laughs> Yeah, I would give a guy who's a Johns Hopkins neurosurgeon a little bit of the benefit of the doubt that he yeah. wasn't lying about getting into West Point, okay? So, um, I don't know. I tend to be a little more forgiving because I've been on the receiving end of uh, same kind of media hack jobs. Yeah, and, and as you say, a tempest in a, a teapot, this, uh, it's remarkable the controversies that are, uh, well, that seem spun up uh, from nowhere and amount to nothing. Senator Rand Paul, we thank you very much, and we wish you luck next week. Thank you, Lou.